Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today we're going to take a look at how you can convert an older DC locomotive like this Atlas RS3 or this Atlas RS11 here to DCC. Now these are fairly easy, straightforward, simple installations. I'm not going to mess around with sound. It's going to be just a plain mobile decoder installation. So there's lots of sound installations on my channel already, but people still want to know how they can convert their old DC locomotives to DCC. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now I know a lot of you pick up old locomotives like this at train shows and the like, or you might pick them up at a flea market or a yard sale, or somebody in your family may give you their old train collection with a lot of older locomotives. These things were made in the tens and probably hundreds of thousands over the last 40 years or so. So there's just tons of them out there available. And the method that I'm going to show you, you'll be able to use on these old Atlas locomotives like the RS3. You can use them on the RS1s. You can use them on the RS11 models. There's just a ton of different Atlas locomotives that were built pretty much the same way and still are available pretty much the same way. However, the ones that are in the current production typically come with some kind of DCC socket, which makes it very easy to just plug in a decoder and start running. However, these older locomotives that I'm going to show you how to convert to DCC do not come with that kind of option for you. You have to hardwire them one way or another. So let's go ahead, move down here to the workbench, and we'll get started with those conversions. Okay, I've got everything set up here on the workbench, so let's go ahead and get started with this process. The hardest part in this whole process really is getting the darn shell off. And it's the same for this guy as it is for the RS-11 and a lot of Atlas locomotives uh, like this. And the reason this is so difficult is if you look right here, there's a little tab on each corner of the shell. Show you that a little bit closer, hopefully. And if you look real close, you can see it's got a little indent in it. Well, that slides down uh, into a spot on the uh, chassis and connects with a little uh, metal nib there. And that's what holds the shell on. And these things are a pain in the neck to uh, work with. And it, it really makes it difficult. It's easy to break these. I've got a number of these that are popped and I've had to recut and redo them and it's just not easy to work with. So let me show you real quick then how to go about getting these off the easiest way I know of. Okay, so you take your locomotive like this and you pinch in here at the long hood end and lift up at the same time and you can see it popped out. Okay, once that happens, this end will often pop out as well. If it doesn't, if this one does not come out, what you can do is literally just pull this one up and hold it and at the same time push down and it will leverage it out. So that's about the easiest way. And then it just slides right off once you get it uh, disconnected from that little nib in there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what's involved. Now these are the original uh, light boards that came with these. Basically this has to come out and you toss it. And you'll note after that there was one light here in the center that provided the headlight for both ends. Very, very odd little system here. Um, there's a light tube, I don't know if you can see that in there, but in the bottom there's a light tube that goes all the way to each end. And that is what uh, this light illuminated. So you had headlights on both ends on at the same time. So that makes a pain in the neck because you have to do your own lighting. By the way, these were made by Kato. You can see right here, it's cast on it, it says Kato in Japan. So these were initially designed and built for Atlas by Kato. So they are a very, very good uh, locomotive. They run real slow and uh, they're very powerful. So they're a great design as far as I'm concerned. The mechanism and everything is pretty much the same with these RS-11s. 
you pinch that end, it dislodges or uh, uncouples this little tab, and you can pull it right off. And as you can see, it's got that same light board here made by Kato in Japan. In later years, probably 15, 20 years ago maybe, uh, Atlas changed the design a bit, and you can see the weight here. On these, the, the weight just sits in here loosely, and it was always a pain in the neck uh, because of that. On the later design, when, Kato, when they redesigned these, they uh, put a couple of screws here on each side of this to hold this weight in place, which is great. They also had these light bulbs, um, used a different circuit board with a couple of light bulbs here. And I've uh, just installed these, as you can see, on this DCC decoder. So you might end up one with one that looks something like this. Uh, if you get the older version, you'll end up with something like this. So now that we've got the shell off, how do you go ahead and prepare this for uh, installing the DCC decoder? Well, these are your pickups, left and right power pickups from the trucks. So we have to disconnect those from these little wires here. And that's fairly easy. All you have to do is grasp it, lift up, and pull, and it will pop out. Okay, so all you have to do is grip it and pull and it will come out of there. Grip the little clip and pull to dislodge it. Like that. And it's easy, just keep these separate from sides here. Now, with that, the only other thing you have to worry about is, if you look right here, you can see these brass strips that come up from the motor. Those go to the brushes. So we want to pull those out of there like that. Okay, at that point, all you have to do, there's a couple of clips here that hold this board in place. All you have to do is push that out of the way and the thing will pop right out of there. Okay, at this point, I will tell you, this motor is isolated. It's electrically isolated. You don't have to worry about that. It's all taken care of for you. All we have to do is find a way to connect this to a decoder. So let me show you the easy way to do that. Now there are a number of options available to you as far as uh, replacing that light board with a DCC decoder here. Uh, NCE has made a whole series of these boards. They've had the uh, DA-102, the DASR, and the DS DASR is the current uh, production model uh, of a board like that from NCE. Digitrax uh, has made this one, it's the DH-150K but I think it's been out of production for about 20 years now. And uh, they now produce one called the DH-165AO, which is for Atlas. And uh, they might have some others available on there as well. Uh, you can check that on their website. So those are some options as far as Digitrax goes. The folks at TCS make one similar to this. It's the A4X. And uh, Soundtrax makes one. Uh, get ready for this one. It's an STXMC2H104AT. And I'll put all this in the uh, description so you can look it up. All of these companies offer boards similar to this. None of these are sound boards. These are all plain DCC mobile decoder boards. So if you want sound, uh, take a look at some of my other videos on how to do that. Now I've zoomed in a bit so I can show you this. On this side of the board it says rear with a little arrow facing this way. And that means it should face towards the long hood end of the locomotive. Even if your prototype ran the, with the long hood forward, we're going to set it up this way. And that, the reason that they do it that way is, if you look right here, there's a couple of little solder tabs. That's for connecting these motor brush leads to. Now on this particular motor, these tabs are a little bit too wide uh, for this to slip on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip off a little bit of the side of this tab, like that, and then cut it with my knife so that it's going to pop out of there and hopefully we'll be okay. Like that. There we go. 
And then this should slide in right over those little tabs. Like that and like that. So now we've got the decoder installed in the locomotive sitting on top of the motor. Now we have to make these connections. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. One thing we can then do is we can cut that and prepare it. So I'm going to bring these little tabs up and then bend them over so they'll fit right on the circuit board where we need them. And then I'm going to cut it off a bit. So the remainder of that little brass is going to fit right on there. And then I'm going to do it up here. Now you'll note that in this case, things are out of whack just a bit. So I'm going to have to make adjustments for that. That'll be okay. We can just bend it this way a little bit and then cut it. Okay. One thing I'll tell you, it helps to take this out of the way and get the handrails out of your way. Now, we can try to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to bend that over here like this, as you can see, so that it's going to be it flush on the board, like that. And then bring, so you can see it sitting right over that little solder spot. Let me go in just a little bit closer for you so you can see this. Okay. So I've got it so it's bent and going to be right over there. Now I'm going to pull it off and snip off most of it with my snippers here, wire cutters, because you only need just a touch of it there for the final solder connection. There. Now let's see if that's going to be okay. Whoops. I think it's still a little bit too wide. Well, I can get it right on there. Okay, so what we're going to do next then is go ahead and solder that right into position there. Now the first thing I'm going to do is pull this back out of the way, the little brass strip, on both sides. And I have my soldering iron all heated up and ready to go. So I'm going to just put a little bit of solder on that tab right there and this one over here. Like that. And I'm going to do a little bit here on the uh, underside of the uh, brass strip here. Like that. So we got it ready, prepared to be soldered. Now, let's move it into place. See if it's still hot. Eh, I can touch it, so it's not all that hot. I'm going to bring it right up over here. Okay, I'm going to hold that in place with my forceps. While I solder it. Okay. That one side's done. Now let me get this side. This one will be easier because it's a straight on alignment. Okay, so you can see we've got the motor brush connections to the position here to the point on the board where those are supposed to be soldered to. And then I'm just going to take my uh, hemostat here and push them into position. Bend that down in there into position here and on this side as well to make sure everything's out of the way. So we'll just push that down. You could use a screwdriver tip, anything 
that you can use to bend those clips into position there. Make sure while you're doing this that you do not cut through and into one of these little strips here on the circuit board. Otherwise, you'll get a short circuit. So be very careful about that. Okay, so that gets us connected to the motor. What about these uh, power leads on each end? Let's take a look at that. Now let me point out, if you don't want to fool with doing this here like I've done, these contacts right here are also for connecting to the motor. So you can either use these two or you can use these two points here like I showed you. The next thing we want to do then is connect the power pickup wires from the trucks to these points here on the circuit board. To make this connection here, all we're going to do is take and cut these little metal clips off right here, like this. Just snip them right off of there and get those out of the way. And then I'm going to take my uh, wire strippers that I've used a lot in the past and we will strip just a little bit of wire. You don't need much insulation stripped off of there. Just enough to make that solder connection. Like that. And we'll pull these off too down at this end. And over here. Okay, those are done. Now we'll pre tan them. The next thing you want to do is pre tin your connections here or the tabs on the circuit board, like this. Okay, we got that one done. And now I'm just going to hold these with my forceps like this. And we'll get this one. around this way. At this point, we now have all the connections made, the two motor connections here, or you can use these two if you want to wire it with wires. We've got the connections from the trucks coming up to provide power at each end here, so we've got plenty of power connections. And if these aren't long enough, you might find you have to add little extensions on, but in this case, mine are going to work just fine. Now, as far as lighting goes, because you noticed I have not added any headlights on here. At this point, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is refer you to back to one of my videos on lighting your locos with LEDs, I believe was the title. And I'll put a link to it right above me here, and also a link at the end of this video. So one of the two places you'll be able to find that and see how you can make that connection. Uh, I've also shown how to do headlights in a lot of other videos on these installations. So this is just to get you going, get you running. Let's go over here now and try it out on the layout. I'll first, of course, test it on my programming track, and then we'll go ahead and give it a test drive. I put the locomotive on the programming track and checked it out. There were no shorts at all, and I've, I've programmed it to a unique address so that it's not going to conflict. So let's see how it's going to start up and run. Starts off real nice and smooth, absolutely dead silent. All you can hear is the click of the wheels there.
bring it back down for you. So it's almost eerie how quiet they are, let me tell you. And like I said, these are one of my favorite locomotives along with my Cato uh, RS2s. So if you have some of these Atlas locomotives or some Athern or some old Bowsers that could use these kind of decoders, dig them out and pop a few in. These decoders don't sell for that much. They're maybe under $25, $30, something in that realm you can get them for. So you can be up and running fairly quickly and easily uh, as long as sound is not something that you're looking out for. Okay, remember at the end of the video I will provide a link to another video where I showed how to use LEDs for lights on your locomotive and there are also a number of other videos here on the channel that you can look at that go into the process of adding lights to these circuit boards. Well, that's a wrap for today's video on how to convert Atlas locomotives like this to DCC. And also, you can use this same technique for older Stuart locomotives, a lot of Athern locomotives. So, you'll be able to do a lot of things. Just don't overthink it. It is a very, very simple process. So, have a great week, have a great weekend, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.